the idea to run a half marathon from Newcastle to South Shields. Mike Neville now reports on what happened last weekend when 12,264 people decided to follow this Pied Piper of Gateshead in the joyous celebration known as the Great North Run. I think it's one of the best organised races I've ever seen and there could be a blueprint for other races like this throughout the country. I'm glad that I was in the first one of the Great North Run because I think it'll go on like the old bleeding races forever and ever. I think we're the beginning of something very, very big here. And so say the runners and the thousands who saw the Great North Run. A half marathon for champions, the nation's biggest athletics event, a million pound fundraiser, the greatest, the friendliest. But above all, a colourful and joyous celebration of regional identity and spirit. The day the North found a new reason to be proud. Here at last, the day we've been telling Look North viewers about for the past four months. And all around Newcastle's Central Motorway, there's a battalion of helpers preparing for the army of competitors who are expected to turn up. And everything has to be ready. One, one. Yeah, the runners are to be lined up in blocks of a thousand according to the estimated times they've submitted. But no one in Britain has ever seen what 12,264 competitors look like en masse. One thing is certain, the organisation has to be perfect. OK, pull it over. The army's making okay, sure I don't do any damage when I fire their 25-pounder to start the race. It's taken months of teamwork to get to this bright and promising Sunday morning in the heart of Newcastle. Although there's nearly an hour and a half to go, many of the competitors are here already. For most, it's a new experience. They're not regular athletes, but members of the public who've been inspired by Brendan Foster to follow the 14-week training schedule devised by international coach Stan Long. Nearer race time and preparations are more urgent. Butterflies in the tummy and the smell of embrocation that regular athletes know so well are being shared now by thousands. And the organisations become more urgent too. The army has to collect all the competitors' street clothing and somehow try to make sure they get it all right at the other end. One five. One five. One six. One six. One eight. One oh. One oh. One oh. <laughs> the race instructions advised everyone to use plastic bags to keep warm before the start. And there's no shortage of other strange and wonderful costumes. After all, it is a fun run. It's clear that most, if not all, the 12,264 who entered are going to be here to beat the record 6,700 who ran in the London Marathon. Some of them have last-minute problems, but few greater than 17-year-old Harry McClurg, a schoolboy from Newcastle. I've just got to tell an official that I am, I meant I'm starting at the back because when I first entered, you see, I was in the first, uh, well, I was in between 1,000 and 2,000. And now I've dislocated my patella and I'm in plaster. And so you see I've got to start at the back. Is that through training? No, it was um, playing football. But you still want to take part? Yeah. Somewhere at Hartlepool. I just know it's Hartlepool. I'm not sure of the... Uh, the <laughs> we'll tell you about it back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can uh, leave my stuff in, um, in a bus actually, so I'm OK. Is there, anything, is there anything else you need, then, once you've got your number? No. You need a stack. Well, it has. Thank you. Thanks very much. Have you got that? <laughs> Is the dog running? Yes. She's walking. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She can run, but I can't. <laughs> I'm walking yeah, with her. All the way yes. to South Shields. Yes. How long do you think it'll take you? Three hours. So they're, they're opening the motorway after 90 minutes. <laughs> well, let's see. Walking. I could be among yeah. the traffic. <laughs> That'll be all right. If I make it, I don't care well, how long it takes. It's not, I would as like long to as see I finish it. it. You've been practising? Oh yes, practising <laughs> definitely. <laughs> how, how far have you pushed yourself? Oh, I can't push myself. I'm, I'm dependent on my pusher. Are oh, you being pushed? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. a comfortable <laughs> way. So the extra weight, this signature is going to follow me, lads. You'll be getting round just outside South Shields, you wish you didn't. 
England's soccer captain Kevin Keegan is tactfully wearing a combination of Newcastle United and Sunderland colours. Clever devil. And a rash and generous one too, for he's promised a charity donation of 50 pence for every man and a pound for every woman who beats him. I've not got a clue what it's going to cost me, you know, I mean, it's for a good cause and, and that's going to be the main thing. This Charlie Bear is going to be some rich fella after we finish and that's what it's really all about. How much do you reckon you run on the average pitch on a Saturday? Well, a lot of people would argue a lot less than they used to, but uh, I honestly don't know. It's a different sort of training, but I have done uh, long runs before, so I'm not completely new to it. I just wish we were running on grass and not on, on the road. It starts to hurt my calves after about a couple of miles, you know, because of my age, I think. Wish you the best of luck anyway. I need it. Thank you. Brendan Foster is the man responsible for today's happening. He's now retired from international athletics, but he's racing too. So is his old rival, Mike McLeod, the Elsa Carrier. As McLeod waits, the disabled athletes get their final instruction. Once you're way down in the right hand lane here, past these vehicles, once you get past, are you listening? Once you get past, get into the left hand lane and stay in it. And unless you're riding, you know, two abreast, which I'd discourage, keep the left hand curve until all these vehicles get past. <laughs> There's just over five minutes to go to the main race. To help them compete and make a race of it, the brave ones in the wheelchairs are being sent off five minutes early. And are you ready? Here we go. Good luck, good luck. Seconds and here we go now. My God. By the time he reaches the Felling Bypass, McLeod has clearly decided that no one is going to bypass him. Already he's reeled off miles of 4 minutes 16 and 4 minutes 40 seconds, and his main rivals are several hundred yards behind. What started out to be a race for him has become a triumphal solo performance. Already this year, McLeod has won the golden 10,000 metres, but today is a special one. Geordie Pride demands a Geordie winner, and McLeod is on his home ground. Already he's nearly a thousand yards ahead, and at this pace, he's going to be very near a world record for the half marathon. Back down the course, the wheelchair athletes are winning the hearts and minds all the way. Dave Robinson, the spina bifida victim from Sheffield, is ahead of thousands of able-bodied runners. The celebration.